first thing I heard about the Big Ten Ballroom was all the amazing artists that had performed there. Uh, talking about Ella Fitzgerald, Count Basie, Ray Charles, Ike and Tina Turner, The Original Temptations, Jackie Wilson, Etta James, James Brown, Big Mama Thornton, Fats Domino, Otis Redding, uh, and the list goes on and on. Let me set the scene for you. Lonnie Williams was one of the first African-American police officers in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He served in the police department and then he opened up several other businesses as his side hustle and then eventually opened up what he called the Big Ten Ballroom in 1948. It was a venue for black artists to be able to come in because in 1948, a lot of black artists couldn't play in a lot of auditoriums in America. So this circuit began uh, through the South, through Route 66, uh, and it came through Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so the Big Ten Ballroom was part of that Chitlin Circuit because it allowed African Americans a safe place to perform. So they would invite these great musicians to be able to come through, that they would tour, and there was kind of this behind the scenes group of venues that was scattered through the country where black artists could perform. And the one that we had in Oklahoma was the Big Ten. Uh, on that Chitlin Circuit, you had uh, people who uh, embraced these artists because during segregation, a lot of these artists didn't have any place to, to stay. A lot of times they stayed in the homes of the families in the, in the neighborhood. The Williams family who owned the Big Ten, their family in fact would host folks. They still tell stories about getting up in the morning and stepping over the temptations, sleeping in their living room. And so the Chitlin Circuit also provided uh, not only a safe place for African Americans to, to perform, but it also created uh, a, a, an economic opportunities for these, uh, these musicians. Now that ballroom was the place to be able to get music in North Tulsa for decades. And then it closed down in the 1960s. And it sat idle for more than two decades. The building had been vacant uh, for a long time. And so we needed a place, our own place to perform. Dr. Shaw in 2007 saw the Big Ten for what she could be again. And I said, look, we gotta get our own spot. So we saw the building and we knew that this would be a great place to, uh, to perform and to, to, to restore it. And so we went and asked uh, Mount Zion Church. They were the ones who actually uh, owned it at the time and they sold it to us. It was hard getting a loan. And so we wrote the grant for Lowe's. Uh, they loved what we had done in the community and they uh, just decided that we were, we were one of their choices for the first 100 grant and so that allowed us to uh to get the get the money and then they nominated us for hgtv uh show which is called uh, build it forward which is sponsored by lowe's uh, we also got an opportunity to be connected with uh several other uh historic venues uh and we're creating this what we call cultural tourism uh where people can come all from all over the world just to see what's going on in, uh, in our community. And if anybody's traveling through Tulsa, I'd encourage you to swing down Apache and hear live music. It's the place intended to be able to hear history come alive. By the way, the Big Ten's not called the Big Ten anymore. Now they call it the historic Big Ten. We're living out history right now. The Big Ten Ballroom is like the, the gift that keeps, keeps on giving. And so the sky is not the limit for the Big Ten Ballroom.